With a new Joker film starring Joaquin Phoenix due to hit cinema soon, it seems high time the iconic Batman villain had his own dedicated film. Even if some of the previous Batman films have felt a little like Joker films due to some amazing and dominant performances, Phoenix's Joker promises a more psychological, complex Joker than ever before. Which got us thinking about some of the best Batman villain portrayals that have left us wishing they had a film of their own. So here are our top 7 Batman movie villains. But you can call me... The Riddler. When people think of great Batman films, they almost certainly don't think of the 1995 edition to the family, Batman Forever. Often considered one of the worst Batman films ever, this instalment was criticised for having a loose, sometimes even boring plot, and visuals that people found fun at best, and plain repulsive at worst. Indeed, someone who doesn't know they're in the worst Batman film ever is Jim Carrey, who is as ever giving his performance everything he has. And whilst it isn't much of a claim to fame, he is by far the best performance in this film. As a wacky nerd with excessive eye makeup who creates a device allowing people to enter their TVs so he can take over their minds, this role strangely seems made for Carrie's acting style. Great speech, Oswald. Oh, my name is not Oswald! It's Penguin! I am not a human being! I am an animal! Critically received much better than Batman Forever, Tim Burton's 1992 instalment Batman Returns was a more rich and seductive interpretation of Gotham. With Burton as a director, it's no surprise Danny DeVito was subjected to a classic Burton makeover to play the comical villain the Penguin. With heavy eyeliner, scraggy hair and dressed in a dumpy onesie, DeVito's look alone was an iconic addition to the series. DeVito isn't known for being cast in hunky roles, but a psychopath orphan raised by Penguin's Oswald Cobblepot is undoubtedly one of his less flattering undertakings. Planning mass infanticide by murdering all the firstborn sons of the richest families of Gotham, DeVito is still the repulsive felon we need him to be. And it's very much his repulsiveness which makes him stick in your mind, as the way DeVito depicts the Penguin's greed for power, fame and sex leaves you undoubtedly hoping he achieves none of the above. I'm probably not very frightening to a guy like you, but these crazies, you can't stand it. So when did the nut take over the nut house? They scream and they cry. Now. Whilst most think of him as brummy bad boy Tommy Shelby, long before Peaky Blinders, Killian Murphy began portraying a genius psychopath with a grain bag over his head, Scarecrow. Unlike most of the actors on this list, Murphy's Scarecrow has been revisited time and time again in the latest additions to the Batman franchise, and with good reason. He seems too great a character to let go, even if he's never been given a very dominating part. We first see him in Batman Begins in 2005, a film often credited with breathing new life into the franchise and changing the tone of the Batman series. Murphy in all films is creepy and unnerving no matter how large or small his part, and whilst this handsome man might not look like your average monster, it's his very lack of physical intimidation which makes him horrifying. Everything about him is down to psychological threat. He's truly insane and unpredictable, and there's no reaching his humanity. Now what, you need someone to shake it for you? Hello. Damn. Jesus. I, I thought you was dead. Half. Previously played by Tommy Lee Jones in the aforementioned train wreck Batman Forever, Aaron Eckhart clearly wanted to make a big impression playing the district attorney who sets out to take down Gotham's organized crime, but loses his girlfriend and half of his face in an explosion. Whereas it would be easy to represent Two-Face as a good guy gone crazy with revenge, juggling schizophrenic or bipolar tendencies, Eckhart brought Two-Face away from such simple explanation. It's the understated and sincere way Eckhart plays Two-Face, in a world where a lot of Batman villains are very exaggerated, that he manages to make his character hard to label. Two-Face never truly becomes an evil lunatic, but by not drastically changing his character in this way, Eckhart is also suggesting neither was Harvey Dent ever intrinsically good either. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. If I pull that off, will you die? It would be extremely painful. You're a big guy. For you. Following after The Dark Knight was never going to be an easy feat for any villain, so Tom Hardy took a bold step when he signed up to play Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. 
and it was clearly not a task he took lightly when the already notoriously bulky Hardy showed up as Bane clearly having worked his ass off in the gym. His sheer physical presence in this film is astonishing alone, and as the only villain to have ever broken the bat, he needed to look like he could throw his weight around. However, when discussing how Bane breaks the bat, this is as much a psychological overpowering as a physical one, and it's Bane's intellect alongside his physical presence that makes him such a worthy opponent. Hardy's choice of voice is key, it's not what you'd expect from the frightening exterior. The well-pronounced language and calm tone somehow makes him sound more terrifying as it's a constant reminder of his intellect and level of control. Alongside Danny DeVito in Batman Returns was another brilliant villain in the form of Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. And it's a crying shame that Catwoman lost screen time to the Penguin because she is, in our opinion, a more engaging villain. Inarguably, Pfeiffer is also the most iconic cinematic Catwoman of all time, despite valiant efforts by Anne Hathaway and less valiant efforts by others. In this film, Catwoman undergoes a transformation from infantile feeble girl to a sexually confident, sassy and dangerous woman. Not only is it great to see the process of a villain being created, but there is something about Catwoman's empowering conversion that is enchanting. It's also the playful way Pfeiffer carries out her role that seems to invite us along for the ride, and her delivery of most of the script ensures nearly every line is quotable. Jack is dead, my friend. You can call me Joker. Let's put a smile on that face. Okay, so shooters, we just couldn't pick between the two. When Jack Nicholson played the Joker in Batman in 1989, it seemed no one would ever be able to rival his performance. Yet nearly 20 years later in 2008, Heath Ledger gave us a Joker in the Dark Knight no one could have anticipated. Both films seemed more engaged with the Joker than Batman thanks to the brilliant performances of both Nicholson and Ledger. We hope Nicholson won't mind us saying that he has an unrivaled talent for playing mad characters. He was clearly comfortable in the role and much like Pfeiffer, you feel Nicholson wholeheartedly loved playing the Joker and it's hard not to get swept up in his enthusiasm. For all his dark deeds, Nicholson's Joker was one of joy, and that in itself was terrifying, as he was convincingly a lunatic who found genuine bliss in suffering. Unlike Ledger's Joker, Nicholson was a smooth criminal who was presented immaculately. He is a perfectionist and hilariously over the top. While you may struggle to laugh at Ledger's Joker, Nicholson invites us to enjoy his performance. Ledger's Joker, on the other hand, was a very different but equally brilliant depiction. Rather than try and emulate Nicholson's famous interpretation, Ledger saw a character who was never able to shake his own torment. The result is a Joker who is complex, twisted, and in some ways more human than ever before. With a fresh backstory of child abuse and degraded physical appearance and movement, we almost find ourselves empathising at times with Ledger's Joker, before he does something incredibly unforgivable, of course. We just can't choose between the two, but perhaps because both actors had such a different approach to the character, they're incomparable. Oh. 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 Never start with the head, the victim gets all fuzzy. So, will Joaquin Phoenix be able to rival these two juggernaut performances as the Joker, or bring something new and equally valuable to the character's history? Judging by early reactions, he's going to be a strong contender. What's your opinion on Nicholson vs Ledger, or do you feel we missed any iconic villains on this list? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>